Hey everybody and welcome to a free program tutorial by Nick Wheeler and uh, basically today I'm just going to show you a really really easy animation with Synfig Studios. Now before I get started I just need you to know that this comes in one, two, three, four, five parts. Now the part one is Synfig, um, the tool box thingy here usually starts off to the left and it has all these tools you can use, you can uh, click about, set up, uh, undo, redo, file, save, open, save all, help, and uh, stuff like that. <coughs> it also has composition options here and color options. So, can you use that? I just wanted it black for default because I'm going to use that here pretty quick. Um, the next box to, or uh, right next to it, should be Synfig Animation 1, and this is just your workspace area. That's all you got to know. That's what it is. Um, also, one thing you need to know, this program is sometimes very fragile on Windows and can crash easily, but one of the great things about this program is it has a history recorder, so it remembers everything you do, so if it does crash, it should remember um, what you've last done in your files, and I actually um, found it so helpful because I almost lost something using this program, but it saved it for me automatically when it crashed. So I, I just had to reopen the program, and it says, do you want to recover? And I clicked yes, and everything was right there as I had it before it crashed. So it's really, they took care of that really well. This program is no longer in development. Uh, it's open source, I believe. So if you know how to program, you can go ahead and mess around with it uh, uh, to fix the crashing if you can, I guess. If you can do that in an open source program, I'm not too good with programming yet. I want to, but for now, that's all I can tell you. That's all I know. Uh, the next window is the navigator, and this little box right here. Oops. Yeah, you want to leave that slider right there alone. But um, yeah. Anyway, this basically shows you what you're going to be recording when you click render in your um, synthetic animation. Uh, see this red line? That is over what you're going to record. So, if uh, everything outside of here you're going to record between the checkers and uh, the wall or the edge of the window. Not this part, not the slider, just this gray empty area because the red line goes over that. So that's just something you get, should remember. Um, when you're rendering, you might want to fix that. If you know how to use wax, just use the um, quick 3D objects or objects 3D and you can resize it in wax to take out all this stuff which is really clever and uh, a lot sometimes easier to do but if not you just simply slide this around resize it a little bit or you can manually resize the um, the workspace window itself until um, the checkers takes up the whole inside <clears throat> but for editing I like to leave it open just leaves a little more flexibility. Um, so yeah, that's just something good to remember. Then here at the bottom is oh no, I'm not done with the navigator window. So that's that right there, the um, the red thing. You just I just explained that. Uh, this is info. This shows you where your mouse is on the workspace. Um, these numbers will move when you move around on the workspace. Uh, red, green, blue, alpha. I guess that's alpha. That's just what I know it as. But I'm I don't really mess around with this. And then here, the palette editor. This is your colors. You can... Ooh, cool. Alpha. I did not know you could do that. That's pretty cool. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, this is basically your... Um, uh, choose your color for the object you want to make, and then that's it. This is your history, so if you lose... If, if the program crashes while you're working, this, this, uh, this tells you everything that it's saving. Um, tool options. This shows you the current tool that you're using. Right now I've got the normal tool and this one has no options but if I were to use a different tool it would give me a couple options I could mess around with. It's pretty awesome. And this is the layers. These are basically it just kind of basically shows you the objects you have and by um, moving them above or below each other you can choose which one is um, a top layer or bottom layer. Basically it's a similar thing to uh, uh, Adobe Photoshop or GIMP if you use GIMP or Adobe Photoshop 
And then there's groups. You can put <coughs> certain objects in groups. Excuse me. And then uh, it just makes it easier to edit sometimes. And then there's these options down here that I don't really mess with. And then the time track. I don't use uh, curves or uh, con canvas meta ed metadata. I don't use those two. I just use the time track to go through the animation itself, or sometimes I just use this, which is right next to the workspace. And then it just kind of shows me what's going on around here, so, you know, it's just kind of easier to keep an eye on things. All right, now that I've introduced you to this program, it's time to get started. Um, just start off by getting a background, because otherwise it would just be plain gray and it's kind of boring, so I don't want boring. I don't like boring. Boring is boring. So I'm just going to make a random black background. There you go. There's a black background. Uh -huh. And then you can take a, a beeline tool, which this is a curvy tool, like uh, when you're rotoscoping or something in wax. It's kind of like that. And then there's a polygon tool, which makes a, a very hard uh, yet custom shape. So I'm just going to use the beeline tool, and I'm going to use color red. Actually, no. I'm going to... delete everything in that. If you, By the way, if you press delete, it's, I think it deletes everything. So you got to be careful. You know, just make sure you know what you have selected. Uh, or just click undo if you made something you don't want. But I've changed my mind, and I want the background to be gray. There. And then you just pick a darker... Uh, no, I accidentally... Okay, yeah, you just pick a lighter gray, and then you make that either the floor or the wall, but I'm going to make it the wall, because, you know, just, you know, doesn't that look, just look a little more natural than the, than the floor being lighter, I don't know why, it just does, anyway, um, so once you have that, go ahead and select your beeline tool, and, uh, click, hold, do not let go of the click, and now you can kind of stretch this out, now the farther this is stretched, the, um, farther your first uh, portion of the line will go. So here, I'll show you. If I stretch it way out here, and then let go, I have this uh, kind of uh, line thing that is actually following my cursor and from the base of where I started. But it bows way up here, following this one right here. So you got to make sure you know what that does. So you can move this back down by clicking it. And I'm just going to kind of make it come out a little bit. And then come down to the bottom of the um, ground, to the ground, and then click hold. Now, this one has two. Just just kind of makes it a little easier to show you what you're doing, so it's basically the only reason it has two. Um, just kind of make it a little, I don't know, flat or something. And come over here, let go, come over here, make another one right about here. And make it the same thing, kind of flat, only a little farther to the left. And then come up here, uh, and then click right to the left of your first um, point, and then just kind of, there you go. Don't forget to click and hold to do that thingy right there, because I just forgot. And I was like, ah. All right, so once you have that, don't don't click at uh, right ne right on the when you first start, on it, or you just move it around. That's basically all it does. Just click the um, normal tool and it will enclose what you just did there. Now, it, uh, usually the beeline tool is a filled tool, so whatever is here will be uh, the fill color. So let's go ahead and take this fill tool right here, 